Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is John Flett. I'm a pediatrician who specializes and is focused on, on unlocking the lives and families of children with ADHD. So this, the question I'm going to kind of ask today is, and it's a question I get off, asked often, is does the ADHD medication actually work? And for a lot of parents, They've heard a lot of wide variety of things. And it might sound strange, but the majority of children that I see for the first time have been seen by many other doctors, including other pediatric psychiatrists, pediatricians, psychologists, general doctors that have been prescribing medicine. And I often see children who come to me on a whole host of medications. And one of the reasons they come to see me is because they don't think the medications are working. So why is it that if a child with ADHD, when the medicine is meant to be really effective, doesn't see benefit on medicine? So why doesn't the medication work in some children and it works in others? So the question we're going to ask ourselves today is, the most important thing is you've got to find somebody who understands the medicine. You've got to have a proper assessment. Because, you know, just this last week or so, I've seen several children where a lot of parents are frustrated. They've gone through years of therapy, tried multiple medications, and kind of are frustrated by the fact that they've been told their child has ADHD. And yes, I agree they have ADHD. They've had trials of medicine. They've started off on short acting, long acting, tried different classes. They've been from Concerta to Vivance, tried homeopathic, microdosing, psychedelics, neurofeedback, years of occupational therapy, speech therapy, and yet their child doesn't seem to respond to the medicine. So really what I've got to try and help parents understand is it's a realistic understanding of what the problem is. You need to know what your child's problems are. And in this particular family is that the child does not need medication because that child has a specific learning disability, has a coordination problem, has severe dyslexia, has problems with dysgraphia, has sensory problems, has lots of other problems. And you know, the ADHD is a small slither of the problem. And that's why the medication is not going to help you suddenly spell. It's not going to improve your handwriting immensely. It's not necessarily going to reinvent your coordination and it's not necessarily going to help your self-esteem if you've got those underlying problems. It's not going to treat anxiety, which this child also had. So the medication has got to be used appropriately and it can seem from the outside because I often ask parents, why is your child on medicine? And I often say, for concentration. You know, concentration and inattention problems are associated with a lot of different mental health conditions, including anxiety and a lot of executive function problems. ADHD is only one of those conditions that affects concentration, because ADHD affects time the inability to attach time to an event, to kind of lock it, future planned events and organization of concentration. So the medication has got to be used for the right condition. And also, if there are other problems, you've got to deal with them. For a lot of parents, particularly in South Africa, you know, we rely on medication more, unfortunately, because it's an indictment on our system. We don't have the social services that people have elsewhere in the world. We don't have the educational services 
These things are expensive. We don't have people that are kind of educated to understand what they've got to do and help those children. So medication is often used as a panacea, as a sort of fix all, and it's not the right way to go about doing things. If your child has ADHD and is lucky enough not to have a lot of comorbidities, 80% of children are going to have problems with learning anxiety, coordination problems, etc. ADHD is the most effective treatment for ADHD. And I'm going to tell you in 24 years, I've never met one parent who thought that the vitamins and all those other kind of associated nice to have treatments was an absolute game changer. The medication, nothing comes close to it because it's a neurochemical problem. It's a chemical problem of the brain. No different than diabetes or epilepsy. You know, you wouldn't necessarily just try behavioral dietary options to treat a type 1 diabetic or a child who has seizures. But you can't see the problem with ADHD. It really needs somebody who can understand it. And when you understand, you move forward. My kind of approach is just helping you as a parent understand, finding out what the problems are and facing them together because it's a journey and it is an absolute pleasure and privilege to treat children because it is something that and I often say to parents, if you could come and sit on this side of the desk, you would see the transformative, the absolute leverage that you can have. It can change your life. And only if it's used in conjunction with other therapies. If your child's got a learning problem, we've got to deal with that. If your child has a anxiety problem, nutritional problem, We've got to deal with that. Medical problems interfering with sleep. There's so many different things that we've got to holistically look at it. Not just that tunnel vision and one prescription for Ritalin that is not the treatment for ADHD. But when we need to, it can unlock your child. Think about ADHD untreated. I often say to parents, you know, you send your child to school you pay for your child's education for five days a week at school. Untreated, the body goes to school, but for probably two days, the brain's at home. It's in a different world. It's not available as much for learning. And as a result, it's like missing three months of the year. That inefficiency of the therapy, whether it's special education, extra lessons, uh, occupational speech, psychological interventions are not being maximized. So all those therapists as well out there, if you see particularly occupational therapists, because often children as a first port of call go to occupational therapists when they're young, because the teacher doesn't really know what's going on. And often it is sort of kind of like a little dipping your toe. Let's see what the OT sees. So the OTs have an enormous responsibility because if that child has ADHD, refer them for treatment, your therapy intervention, and you're going to save that family years of heartache. So properly treated medication because ADHD is a medical problem. So give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. And remember, there are lots of opinions. You know, the world we all see things from different camera angles. And for a lot of those on that journey, once you understand, you then are able to unlock what your child is really capable of. Because with the treatment, you are able to unlock the entire mansion. Untreated, you've got access to probably half or three quarters of the room. The frontal lobe and the ability because your child has that ability. ADHD is not an intellectual problem. It is a problem of self-control. It is a problem of unlocking what you're capable of. So these things resonate with you. Let us know what you think. I'll be very, very keen to hear.